our wonderful Vice Chairman Roy Block. She is the mother of three gorgeous daughters, mother-in-law to three smashing son-in-laws, sister to wonderful grandchildren, both here and in Israel. And a lovely neighbour. A lovely neighbour <laughs> and a great grandmother to a darling little great granddaughter in Israel who was one this week and she's desperate to go and see them all. She spent 15 years working on the front desk and the switchboard at the head office of the United Synagogue in Finchley until coronavirus hit us all. She was Snowy Owl at Kenton Brownies for 14 years. And the title of her talk this evening is Why I Lived on the Isle of Wight Until I Was 10 Years Old. Over to you, Maris. Thanks, Jane. And thanks for all your help, both you and David. During the war, my parents met and married in London. My dad was from Brick Lane in the East End and my mum from Bethnal Green. My father was not able to attend his own engagement party as at the last minute he was not able to get leave from the army. They got married in Bethnal Green Shore. My mum's father was one of the founders of the shore. My father was a gunner in the army. His first posting was to Portsmouth, working on the anti-aircraft guns. He was very nervous of firing the gun, so his superiors very quickly realised it was not the job for him. He was then posted to the Isle of Wight where he had to guard some sort of royalty. To this day, my regret is not asking him who it was. So that is how my brother and myself were both born on the Isle of Wight. During the war, you had to get a permit to travel from one part of the country to the other. My mother eventually joined my father in the Isle of Wight. It was never my parents' intention to live in an area with no other Jewish people. My mother came from a large family and she missed them terribly. I remember going to a phone box once a week with her to phone her parents. My brother was born on December the 24th, 1944. The religious nurses were absolutely thrilled to have a Jewish boy born on Christmas Eve. But unfortunately, by the time I was born a few years later, anti-Semitism had reared its ugly head again. My mother discharged herself from the hospital as soon as she could. My parents used to order kosher meat from Portsmouth, but it was a problem as it did not always turn up. After my mother mentioned this to my grandfather, he said, leave it to me, I will get your meat for you. Every week he would go to the butcher and choose our meat, and it traveled by train and boat, and eventually arrived wrapped in brown paper. Talking about kosher food, one day a nurse came to our house and saw Toma Margarine in the kitchen. She could not believe her eyes. She was not Jewish, but she had worked in the East End and had been to many Jewish houses and had seen Toma. Sometimes in the summer months, my mother would meet us from school and in typical Jewish style, she came with sandwiches and we would spend the rest of the afternoon on the beach. We lived in a very large house that had been turned into flats at the top of a hill. My understanding is that before the war, it had been either a manor house or a wealthy family had lived there. During the war, the army used the building and then after the war, it had been turned into flats. At the bottom of the hill, there is a boating lake and across the road to the boating lake is the beach. We have many pictures taken on both the boating lake and the beach. The rest of our family lived in London, but we were not short of aunts, uncles and cousins coming to visit. We had lovely summers with them all, which kept us close as a family. The fire station was not permanently manned. A siren would go off when there was an emergency. The firemen would then run from their jobs to the local fire station. As we could hear the siren, we always knew when there was a fire or another emergency. When it was time for my brother to learn his bar mitzvah, my father arranged with Rabbi Hall, who was then the rabbi of Portsmouth Shore, to go and have lessons on Sunday mornings. 
After several weeks, Rabbi Hall contacted my dad to say, I thought your son was coming to have his bar mitzvah lesson. My father said, yes, he is. He gets the boat to come over. Well, we have not seen him, said the rabbi. Well, my brother did get the boat to go over to Portsmouth Shore, but he decided that staying by the docks and watching the ships coming in and out was much more fun. My brother was then shipped off to stay with our uncle, who proceeded to teach my brother his bar mitzvah. Our uncle, like his father before him, was also a founding member of a shul. This time it was Hounslow. All the time we were living on the Isle of Wight, my dad kept coming up to London to find business premises. He was a tailor and had a little shop on Union Street Ride, not too far from where we lived. It was not easy to find businesses after war, as there had been so much damage. But eventually, in May 1958, we moved to Archway in North London. Dad had found a menswear shop, and he also carried on with his tailoring at the back of the shop, and we lived in the flat above. We joined Highgate Shaw. I had one year in Ashmount Primary School, there was also another Jewish child there, and we both went to JFS the following year. While we were still living on the Isle of Wight, my parents saw in the Jewish Chronicle that the following year JFS was going to be opening up in Camden Town. My mother wrote to Dr. Conway, nearly begging him to accept my brother and myself into the school, explaining our situation, and that we would be living in London by the following year. Luckily, we got accepted. Our parents made sure that we were very aware that we were Jewish. Every Sunday morning, I remember my mother teaching me other face. After we came to live in London, I attended Cheder a year before I went to JFS. I felt very much at home in the Jewish world. We have many times taken our children to visit the Isle of Wight to show them where I live and all the places we used to go as children. Some Sunday afternoons, we would go for long walks around the coast to Seaview and Putpool Park. These places still exist today, although some of the coast has been eroded. As time has gone on, we've now taken our grandchildren to visit. We have even taken three granddaughters who live in Israel on separate trips. All the children just love it there. We were with one of our granddaughters and we went for a walk on Shabbat. Roy had just said, I expect we won't find too many mezuzahs here. Well, on the very next house, there was a mezuzah. Quite a few years ago, there was an article in the JC called The Island Lights Up. Jewish people on the island had got together to celebrate Hanukkah. When we lived there, we assumed we were the only Jews. There was no way of meeting any others. At the end of the article, there was an email address. It was the person who was the head of the community. I wrote to him. He replied. He said that there are about 100 Jews living on the island today, and he thinks there might be another 100 that have not made themselves known. I find that quite astonishing. If I remember rightly, I think they also get together for Yom Kippur and also the rabbi for small communities has been there. Interestingly, the head of the community lives in a modern block of flats that has been built right next door to the flats where I live. When I lived there, it was just an open space. I would like to finish off by showing you some pictures. I right, hope I can do this. Right, this is the permit. This is the permit that my mother needed to go over to the Isle of Wight.
Um, sorry. Oh. oh, hold on. This is the flat where I lived. Um, can't actually see our flat where this fence is. Uh, we lived on the other side of that. When I was there, there was no fence. Um, myself and my brother on the boating lake, as, as usual. Uh, this is with our dad on um, the green, which is just up above where the beach was. And by the way, it's my dad's yurt site tonight. Uh, Abraham Ben Moshe. So uh, I'm giving this speech in uh, in his memory. Uh, this is with our cousin Colin. And the last one is uh, on one of our many visits up to London to see the family waiting for the train at Waterloo Station. I hope you've enjoyed listening to the abridged version of my Jewish childhood on the Isle of Wight. I would also like to uh, have uh, in memory uh, for my mother, my brother Michael, and my cousin Colin. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maris. That was really interesting. I just love that last photo of you. Just, I wish you long life as so well. Thank you. Um, if anyone has any questions, if you put them in the chat and save them up to the end, we'll let everyone speak and then we'll go through all the questions. So no, that was really lovely. Well done, Mum. Well oh. done, Maris. Well done. Thank you. Well done. Oh, I'm not coming up. They haven't unmuted me. Okay, so our next Ken.